this is the best play I've ever seen in three years of streaming, to be honest. This play was 100% perfect in every way. I love it. All right, so we start off really fast. MP raises to a bit over two big blinds, which seems fine. That's the sizing I would use as well. And then Yakai makes it 175 on the button, which I think is a, you know, is a, is a pretty good sizing. So he's putting Aquino in a tough spot where he's not giving him such a, a bad price that he can always fold. At the same time, he he's giving him a decent price, but you still don't want to call too much because you'll be paying a lot of rake. And you'll be in a three-bet pot out of position, which is a really bad bad spot to be in. And Witcher now four bets to 590. Um, this sizing is quite large, to be honest. I mean, they are a bit deeper, which means that you should size up a little bit, of course. You don't want to give Yakai too good of a price to continue, especially deep stacked. You know, you don't want to four bet him like queens or kings or aces and uh, give him a good price to crack them. At the same time, this is a bit much, I would say. Which means that Yakai is not just going to call too many bad hands. He does call. And the pot's already over 50 big blinds here. And 7-5 deuce is obviously a bingo flop for Witcher, right? If he has mostly queens, kings, and aces, he's not scared on this board. Yakai perhaps, you know, he could have had like sevens, I, I suppose. Uh, he could have had like ace four spades, I suppose. He can, of course, have hands like ace queen of spades that are pretty good. But Witcher doesn't have much to worry about. So he's going to be very, very aggressive on this board. And he bets half pot, which, which is okay. I mean, it's okay to bet that big. You could also even go smaller if you like. You know, apply more pressure to medium strength hands. And Yakai calls. So Yakai is probably thinking he's too deep to check ways, get it in with a lot of overpairs. So he's calling a lot of overpairs, perhaps, and flush draws, and, you know, maybe a couple of weaker floats, but not too many, right? Because his range is already quite tight. The jack is a good card for Yakai, because if he had pocket jacks, he would probably always three a pre-flop and always call a four bet, and, you know, who knows how often he check raises the flop, if at all. And he's going to hit, uh, he's going to hit a set of jacks on this turn quite a bit. Which are kind of jacks, too, so it's not a huge concern. Check, check, makes sense. You know, Witcher might just want to check behind with like Queen sometimes, or Tens, or like Ace King. And Yakai, you know, let's see what he does. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for like a really, really small bet sometimes. That would be a cool play, you know, trying to make, get thin value if he had any like Queens. You know, trying to be tricky with Jacks, trying to induce a raise, or maybe a thin value bet with like Tens, or maybe even in like Kings or Aces. So I wouldn't be shocked if he bets really small. But he does check. And Witcher now bets three quarters pot. So he's basically saying, hey, I check back and like jacks on the flop, uh, on the turn, excuse me, or I check back and like aces, or, you know, maybe this three help me if I had a hand like ace four, which is unlikely to be honest. So he's basically saying he trapped the turn or got there with ace four. So he's representing a pretty narrow range for value. Wow. And Yakai ends up shoving. So at this point, Yakai is basically saying he's got jacks, right? Sevens and ace four are possible, but he's mostly saying he's got pocket jacks. And which are called, so maybe he has the jacks. Whoa. So Yakai has a jack. Um, wait, are we really playing NL25? Is, is this happening, right? I mean, when I was playing NL25, uh, you know, more frequently, maybe like six years ago, you know, everybody was all over the place. So, you know, play has improved quite a bit. So Yakai has queen jack suited. I like the three bet. Calling such a big four bet out of position is a little bit loose at these stakes because I expect people to be a bit too nitty. Um, I like the flop call. And on the river, I mean, I wouldn't hate if he ended up block betting the river. That would be a good play. Betting big would be even a bit of an overplay, right? But when he faces a bet, he's obviously not jack raising for value anymore because he he can't expect Witcher to be calling, you know, jack 10 or 10s here very often. So he's basically saying, I've got pocket jacks, you know, I'm pretending to have pocket jacks and I have a jack blocker, so it's less likely that you are trapping me. So, I mean, it's a very ambitious play, but obviously it's something that, you know, you can't do at a very high frequency because you're representing very few combinations of hands. And especially at lower stakes, you know, 
these types of you know really fancy plays don't really work they don't really work because i mean witcher made a you know arguably a good call maybe not but if i if i could see witcher's card somehow and i knew he had aces i would never make this play right because i just don't think that the average let's say let's say aspiring professional will fold aces here in such a huge pot on a board that looks pretty innocent so yeah it, you know if if you guys want to beat it on 25 generally you want to keep it simple right these types of really fancy blocker plays in theory they, they make sense sometimes but in practice they often don't so if we're playing this hand against otb red baron this line may be good sometimes right it may be but witcher is probably a good player but he's no otb red baron right so we have to keep it a bit more simple how do you rate their plays i like witcher's four bet i like the c bet i like the turn check i like the river bet the sizes could be a bit different uh, I will give him a seven and a half out of ten. Um, Yakai, I love the heart. It's ten out of ten heart, which you don't often see at lower stakes. But you know, I I, I understand what he's thinking. But I think Yakai has probably watched one too many uh, videos on blocker plays, and you know, he didn't realize that he that keeping it simple would have made him a lot more money. So I'll give him a I'll give him a six out of ten. So yeah, definitely fireworks in the very first hand. What do you guys think of that of this one? So CJ raises uh, three blinds, which is non-standard nowadays. I prefer a slightly smaller sizing here. Uh, he can expect to get shoved on by Lolly Taxi sometimes because he has less than uh, than thirty big blinds. But I mean, he's in a small blind, and you know he's a in a CJ is in middle position, so it's not a huge concern. But he can still get three bet, of course, like he did right now. He was three bet by Lion Knight. And shoddy cold calls here, uh, which I'm generally not a fan of. Uh, out of position, you mostly want to end up four betting or folding because, I mean, you're letting CJ into the pot here, you know, getting good odds, and you're still out of position at CJ. And your range is a little bit face up as like a pretty good but not amazing hand. So, yeah, I'd like to see a four bet here or a fold. CJ does fold, which helps shoddy. And 10 7 3, you know, it's, it's hard to say what which hands shoddy cold calls here i mean tens could definitely be in that range jacks queens maybe kings and aces aces probably not but who knows he could maybe have sevens he could have eights nines he could have hands like ace king and king queen suited he might have five dudes off suit who no who knows right who knows it's hard to say how many hands he's cold calling but most likely he's got a pretty good hand so line nine bets really small trying to guess Trying to just get thin value, right? Make Shadi fold a couple of bad hands. And Shadi calls. So he's saying he's got a, a medium strength hand. Turns a three of diamonds. And this turn doesn't really improve Shadi too much. He's going to have a flush sometimes. Maybe he's three suited. But other than a flush, really, he doesn't really improve. So Lion Knight. That's again, you know, for that sizing, he could still have some overpairs in his range. He can, of course, have flushes and a couple of stray draws. And the king is uh, not a bad card for Lion Knight because if he had something like a king plus a flush draw, like ace king or king queen with a flush draw, he not got there. So this is a pretty poor card. And now Shadi leads into him, which doesn't really make that much sense, right? He's basically saying, like, hey, I often have hands like eights or nines or jacks or queens with a diamond that i just called or maybe even hand like ace queen with a diamond or even if he has hand like ace king with a diamond you know it's not like that hand's so great and you know he's shoving for he's betting almost 100 big blinds here so i don't really like leading out too much here line knight line knight less than min raises him so he's basically saying he's got a nut flusher better perhaps I don't think Shadi has a full house too often, so if Lionel has like Ace Five of Diamonds, he can just go all in. But it's a yeah, it's it's a pretty tough bluff to pull off. But then again, remember Yakai in the last hand, he did pull one off, or well, at least he tried. Ooh, cooler. All right, so Lion Knight three bet ten spree, which I absolutely approve of. And Shadi then cold call with Ace 8 suited, which is just too loose. I mean, Ace 8 suited is a great hand overall, but not out of position versus a cutoff 3 bet versus middle position. So he should just fold his hand. And 
On the flop, I, I don't mind Lion's, Lion Knight's bet. He can check behind sometimes. It'd be tricky, right? Try and uh, give a free card to Shadi so he catches up and then you can get value or, you know, let him bluff off. But I don't mind the bet. On the turn, same thing. I mean, now he's got nothing to worry about. And, you know, Shadi's often just going to be folding some of his over cards like King, Queen of Hearts or Ace, King, Offsuit with no diamond. So actually probably would have preferred Lion Knight. I would have preferred a trap by Lion Knight, but, you know, it worked out. And on the river, obviously, with, you know, the second nuts, basically, you know, you should just shove all in. And Shadi, I mean, I can blame him for calling, but the main, the, you know, as played, I don't mind Shadi's call, but he should have not led, right? And he should have also not called Capri. So he kind of got himself in trouble where he got one of the best runouts for his hands and he still lost. And that's kind of an indication that, you know, the preflop play is a bit loose. So I give Lionite, um, I'll give him a seven, seven and a half out of ten. You know, on the turn, I think a, a, a trap would have been really cool. And Shadi, I'll give him, um, I'll give him a four and a half out of ten. I mean, if he had Ace Eight Offsuit here, that would have been way worse than Ace Eight Suited, but it's still a bit too loose. Anyway, what do you guys think? So we've got a limp under the gun. I think a limp is probably the, the least profitable uh, strategy at these stakes because you're guaranteed to pay rake, unless you limp fold, of course, a limp three bets. But uh, yeah, I would, I'd like to see him raise small, if anything, raise big, but definitely not limp. <laughs> Everybody's in there. And it also means that these players are going to be a bit tighter over limping. And obviously, Shio sees this as a nice spot to squeeze because he knows that Rosh may be uh, trapping, but OP and HFFK life probably aren't. I do remember six years ago when I kind of started, I would sometimes limp aces under the gun versus an under, gun, under the gun limper and then back raise right at the very beginning, maybe like seven, eight years ago actually. But th th that's something you don't really see. So he's, he just smells weakness and he pounces on it by raising. <laughs> and everybody calls, wow, that's sick. So Shio must be hating his life now if he's squeezed in like pocket jacks, right? Because, I mean, well, everybody can have sets and straights and two pairs and flush draws and straight draws. So he's going to be very careful. He should probably check his entire range here. And he starts off with a check, which seems good. Actually, surprisingly, he goes check, check. And so this ace is obviously really good for Shio because he's going to be raising hands like ace, king, ace, queen, etc. And other players likely would have put in more money pre-flop with those hands. Wow, look at this GTO bot. Nice play. Rosh calls. And the river is an 8, which obviously favors Rosh. I think it's more likely that he hits two pair or straight now. So Shio should be careful here. And now Rosh ends up shoving for the pot and two snickers, roughly. Um, so he's basically saying he's got a set or a 7, right? So how can he have a 7? He only called on the ace versus a quarter pot bet. So 7 8 is discounted a little bit. And then what could he be bluffing with? He could obviously have a flush draw, right? Yeah, I mean, just a flush draw between the 10 and the king somewhere. Uh, he could have a hand like a pair that he's turning into a bluff. So you could have a hand like 10 9 that he's bluffing with. Um, I don't think he's bluffing with like shoving like two pair for value. So uh, he his range is pretty tight. So, and Shio, uh, what, what does he do? He calls, okay. <laughs> um, hmm. Funny. Um, so she raises pre-flop with 6-5 suited, which is good sometimes. You know, your hand is obviously winning quite a bit of money just by checking because you see a free flop. So if you hit something, you play. If you hit, don't hit anything, you don't. So it's pretty easy for him to play his hands. But he decides to raise here, you know, attacking OP and HFF light. K life, and he knows that Rosh is out of position of both of them, so he's gonna fold sometimes. So I don't mind that. On the flop, he checks bottom two pair with the backdoor flush draw. You know, I said he could probably check his full range, and he probably and he did check. And on the turn, he quarter pot bets river check call. I mean, um, this may be the best play I've ever seen on stream, to be honest. This may be the best play I've ever seen on stream. Everything he did was 100% correct, other than maybe the river call, right? The river calls obviously, you know, a little, I mean, slightly ambitious. He has to put, he basically has to think that Ross has a flush draw or that he turns in like 10-9 into a bluff or some kind of random funny hand. 
Uh, and he probably thinks that Rosh only shoves with a seven, but doesn't really call a seven against a four-way bet. So, I mean, oh, this is the best play I've ever seen. At, this is the best play I've ever seen uh, in three years of streaming, to be honest. This play was 100% perfect in every way. I love it. So, Shio, I was going to say join BTS, but I'm going to sh- I'm gonna join the, the Shio, uh, you know, the CFP, the Shio CFP. So, yeah, shout out to him. Um, he's getting the first 10 plus uh, ever, and I didn't even know that it was a thing. And then Rosh, if you're going to limp call, I mean, King Suited is a fine option. I don't mind the flop check. I like the turn call, and I like the river shove. So had he not limped, I would have given him a very high grade. Uh, but, you know, other than that, it was not the most difficult play in the world, even though it didn't, even, it didn't work. I'll still give him a 7 out of 10. I mean, it's just because he has to get... He has to be penalized for limping because you're just paying so much rake and you're pay- playing opponents that often overfold, right? So you're just going to get so many preflop folds, especially when you have a king and a ten in your hand because you you have two cards that your opponent is often going to play. So yeah, ten plus and a seven. What do you guys think? Rosh raised pre. I don't think he did. And I completely misread this hand, I guess. Um, I completely misread this hand, guys. Somebody just told me he raised pre. I thought he limped under the gun. Jesus Christ, I'm a fucking idiot. Sorry, guys. All right, so let's let's pretend um, that didn't happen. You know, technology and uh, reading comprehension are not my strong suits. Uh, just making bad jokes. So, <laughs> um, let's see. So Shio squeezed the 12 big blinds, that is. Um, that squeeze is a little bit too small for my liking. I also don't like it as much because half HFK life doesn't have a full stack. Uh, other than that, the, 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 I love the flop, flop check still. I like the turn bet. I like the river bet. Then I like it even more. So I don't like the sizing and I don't like the play as much against the, the short stack. So I'll just give him a 10. Uh, Rosh. I'll give him, I'll give him a nine, a nine, a nine out of ten. Actually, I thought it was a great play too. And OP Juggler and HFFK Life probably should have played their hands a bit more tight or a bit more aggressively. So, <laughs> sorry guys, I had to uh, correct myself. I really thought he limped under the gun. I didn't know that.